Welcome to Anoka High School for CTN's live coverage of high school wrestling. Tonight, it's a battle of two teams undefeated in the Northwest Suburban Conference. The title on the line along with the golden shoes as the Cardinals take on the Anoka Tornadoes. Joe Young, Howie Shapiro, sidelines and Howie. Uh, a great rivalry and always fun to see these two teams meet right at the end of the season. No question about it. And, and you know, you, you look around us and the turnout here is incredible. They always bring a lot of people out for this one. It's going to be a tough match for the Cardinals. Anoka comes in at number three in the state. And uh, Coach Springer said, yeah, this may be one of my best teams ever. So that it, uh, it's definitely a challenge for the Cardinals, but I know they're up to the task. Eight rated wrestlers in the 14 weight classes for the Anoka Tornadoes. We started 106 pounds. Cardinals put John Spobody on the mat against Parker Dubrocki for Anoka. Yeah, John comes in with a 25 and 10 record, and, and he defeated actually the number seven ranked wrestler from Egan 4-2 just uh, last week, so he's coming off a big match and looks to continue that here tonight. He's had a nice season in his sophomore yep. campaign. Dobrik, he also a sophomore for Anoka. Yep. A couple of young wrestlers that I'm sure we'll see each other for a number of years to come. Both wrestlers looking to you know, feel each other out a little bit, looking for an edge. And now off the edge of the mat, they'll return to center. Yeah, getting close to the final 30 seconds yep. here in the first period, no score. 30 seconds. 30 seconds. Spobini continues to be the aggressor, and Dobricky warned for stalling. Well, as we talked about that, the match against Deegan where he beat the number seven, was it not a high scoring match, just four to two. Oh, he's just looking for his advantage here. Late takedown for Svobody, and the buzzer will sound, so he will have the 2-0 lead going into the second period. Yeah, nice scoring couple of points just as uh, the buzzer was about to ring. See it again. Nice, uh, nice move. Look at his quickness there. He's able to get a couple of points. Dobrik he starts down and a quick escape to start the second period. Rocky not letting nobody get in low. He's doing a nice job of uh, fighting him off there. John's looking for that that low advantage. Dobricky able to get in deep on a right leg. But Svobody able to splay out, take it away from him. And the stalemate called. We're under a minute remaining in period number two. Svobody able to get the left leg of Dilbert trying to bring him back to the middle of the mat where he can 
complete the takedown, still holding on to that slim 2-1 lead. And not able to complete the takedown over on the edge of the mat. Right at the 32nd mark of the second period. Now both wrestlers uh, not giving up any ground at this point. And a takedown right on the edge for Dobrik. He late here in the second period. Gives him the 3-2 edge. Uh, certainly a nice uh, nice move to get those couple of points as we're winding down here in the second period. Spolbany quickly to his feet, trying to break the grasp of Dobrik. Dobrik desperately clinging to that leg. And he's going to be able to hold it out before until the buzzer sounds and it'll be a one point lead for the Anoka wrestler going to the third period. A yeah, tight match here going uh, going into that period. And, well, and he's going to give up. Svobody the free point and let him up to start the set this third period. So we'll start the third period tied at three. Just saw Bob Adams. Now is Todd Springer head coach for the Anoka Tornadoes. I think it's his birthday today, so so we wish him a happy birthday. It's also alumni night here at yes. Anoka High School. A proud tradition of wrestling excellence, of course, for the Tornadoes. And a big rivalry and a great heel pick there by Dobrik. Svobody trying to stay over the top. Dobricki able to stay in control of that leg. Good job flipping out of it by Svobody back to his feet. And gonna uh, miss the takedown just on the edge of the mat. Yeah, we're, we're approaching the one minute mark left here in period number three, and, and it's obviously anybody's match to win here. Tied at three. Cardinal Koshitz wanted a penalty point against Dobricki, who was warned in the first period for backing up. Nobody being being aggressive right now, trying to trying to get that advantage here as we're winding down in the third. And as we get into the middle weights, where. The string of very, very good Anoka wrestlers, highly ranked Anoka wrestlers, is every point is going to count. No question. There is a penalty point awarded right there. And that will give Spolbany the lead. 18 seconds left. Third shot gets in deep for Dobrik. He's full, but he able to keep him at bay. Got in deep on that single leg, but under three seconds, Fulbany will hold out and get the 4-3 win. Yeah, nice win for him, too. Well-fought battle between both these wrestlers. And John, uh, John comes away the victor. Going to get the first three points of the night for the Cardinals. And that'll move his record to 26-10. Moving ahead to 113. Riley Emery representing Anoka taking on Coon Rapids Logan Rotsi. Logan comes in with a 17 and 16 record on the season.
Good whip by Rotstein, but Emery able to hold his way through, roll through it, nearly get a takedown himself. They exchange positions a couple more times along the edge and end up off the mat. But real good action early on in this 113-pound match between Emery and Rotsi. Yeah, both uh, both quick wrestlers, both looking for that uh, a little bit of an advantage. Headlock thrown by Emery, and he gets the takedown. Rotsi able to roll off his back pretty quickly. Yeah. But now right back in trouble with a minute left and a quick pin for Riley Emery. In exactly one minute. Looked like he was a little shaken up too. Came down hard on his head. Well, he went for the head toss, and Emery caught him and went to the headlock, and it looked like Ratzin was going to be able to roll his way out of it, but then turned right back onto his shoulders. And it leads to the pin for Riley Emery. How quickly uh, tor Tornadoes take the lead 6-3 here on that pin. Now moved to 120. Zach Thomas for Coon Rabbits, Colby Noss. A very quick takedown to start the match. Well, Noss happens and then to get, lets him go. Rated number three in the state. Just a sophomore. In deep, trying to finish off the double leg takedown. Thomas desperately gripping to the back, trying to give not to give up too much. It is a takedown, but. That comes in with a, uh, a 20 and 11 record. Not to light him up again. This time, Thomas able to stay back and catch Nas in the shot. Nas able to break free. And we'll get in deep on the right side this time. And finish with the double leg takedown. His third of the first period. Yeah, already a 6-2 lead for him. He's going to cut him free yep. again. You can see why he's so highly regarded. Yeah. Very quick, good move to get in deep. A variety of different takedown options. Oh, and he scores points so quickly. Trying to roll Tom Thomas to his back. He does get a couple of near fall points. Pushes his lead to 11-3 as we're under 15 seconds remaining in the first period. controlling first period for Colby Noss. Noss will be on the bottom as we start the second period. Yeah, get an opportunity to see how he wrestles from uh, that position quick. You can see his quickness as you talked he about. Wrestles in that position for a very short yeah. amount of time is how he wrestles in that position. A very quick reversal to start the second period, puts him right back in the dominant position, trying to work on the hands of Zach Thomas underneath. Hard cross face, trying to get him rolled over. Now Thomas does a nice job of staying away from that. But Noss definitely the aggressor with that big 13 to three lead.
very early reversal to start this second period for Nas, but just hasn't been able to do much with it since getting there. Thomas staying on his base, not doing a ton to get out of it, but not giving up anything either. And now the free point as Nas cuts him free, tries to reel him back in along the sideline and does, gets another takedown right there. And now off the mat, and they'll return to center. Yeah, he's he's piled up points since this uh, this one started, 15 to four in favor of Nas. Thomas just not given any option at all to try <laughs> find a way out from underneath. Nas will ride him to the buzzer and have that big 14-4, 15-4 edge going to the third period. Well, to give Thomas credit, he, he stayed away from that uh, those pin opportunity. Nas quickly to his feet. And wow, what a reversal. Taking Thomas right to his back off the hip toss. Well, he's, he's getting him turned, but Thomas doing a nice job of kicking out of it. It's going to be a three-point near fall. And that'll push it to a tech fall for Colby Noth. Look at the reversal here. I mean, again, it uses his quickness and then it uses some power and some leverage to get him in the reversal and gets that uh, nice win for the Tornadoes. They're up 11-3. Moving along to 126 pounds, Moise Madimba for Coon Rapids, taking on Anoka's Dylan Dregmiller. Dregmiller rated number three at 126. Moises uh, comes into this match with a 20 and 14 record. Greg Mueller takedown, then cuts Madimba free. Looking for another takedown, he can Put Matimba straight to a pinning combination. Boy, lures him in, goes single to double. And he gets the takedown. Again, using that uh, his his leverage and his power, bring him to the mat. Holds the 4-2 edge. Again, getting in on the legs of Medimba. Medimba trying to fend him off with the legs. Greg Miller staying with it. Call that for potentially dangerous. So Drag Miller unable to finish the takedown there. Final 30 seconds of the first period. Madimba got in on the angle of ankle of Drag Miller. Drag Miller quickly counters. Got hold of Madimba, Madimba's ankle. Stalemate. 
Takedown for Drag Miller late here before the end of the first period. He'll have a 6-2 lead going to period number two. Yeah, able to get those couple of points to increase that lead. Coach Springer, I'm sure, happy with the way his squad has started. It's early, quite obviously, but a nice 11-3 lead. Drag Miller up and out to start the second period. And a good counter move to get another takedown, his fourth of the match. Yeah, he's starting to slowly build this lead. We're just 30 seconds into that second period. Gonna cut him loose. And again, Magimba starts. And Drag Miller finishes. And another catch and release. Return to the center of the mat up 11 3. Oh, I thought he released him right on the edge of the mat, too. Drag Miller getting Madimba turned a bit. Moises well, uh, doing a nice job of staying out of it, though, staying out of the pin possibility. But he's going to get uh, Drag Miller another three points to make it 14 3. And now in the cradle, and Madimba in some trouble with 30 seconds left in this second period, right in the middle of the mat, too, and Drag Miller. It is, it is so close. He's, we'll see if he, can, he runs out of time here. Five seconds. Oh, and the Dimba able to hold on until the buzzer. I'm not sure how he did hold on, but he's going to get another three points. Uh, Make it 17-3 now. Means the takedown for Drag Miller would uh, would end it if it is not directly to the back in a, a possibility of going turning into a pin. Well, let him try and finish for a pin if he can get it into a pinning combination yep. right away, but the 14 point lead, any point he scores, it becomes another tech fall for the Tornadoes. Again, Drag Miller, good counter, good patience. It started with a decent shot by Madimba, and it ended with Drag Miller turning it into a takedown of his own, a tech fall, and a 19 3 win. A couple of back to back tech falls for the Tornadoes to increase their advantage here. Makes it 16 to 3. You see the job there to get the extra both points to win. Get that tech fall and move on. And again, you saw Drag Miller uh, very skilled throughout that match. A number of different takedown techniques and a convincing victory. Now we've got Scott Springer for Anoka. Taking on Coon Rapids, David Weiser. David comes in with a 21 and 10 record to start this match. Scott Spring, the, the son of head coach Todd Springer.
Weiser keeping weight on Springer. Yeah, he's doing a good job not letting him up. After an early takedown by Springer, a reversal by Weiser and And not much action nope. since as Weiser keep trying to keep Springer broken down to the mat. A little more than 30 seconds remain in this first period. Springer able to get back to his feet late in this period. Get turned around and Weiser trying to stay in control. And there's going to be the escape for Springer. So he will take that slim one point lead. So we're about to head to the second period. Springer will start underneath here in the second period. This has been this has been tight since the start. Stalemate called. Yeah, and after spending quite a bit of that first period underneath, finally got that late escape that gave him the lead just before the end of the first period, but he then chooses the down position where he's been for quite a while. Yep. And again, a, a pretty nice job by Weiser to keep weight on him and keep him broken down to the mat. Springer trying to switch out. Weiser able to roll right through it and break him back down to the mat. Springer still holding that uh, one point lead. Springer quickly to his feet, got turned around. And able to get the escape midway through the second period, and he has a 4-2 lead. A little, little bit of a cushion here. We're under a minute in period number two. Weiser caution for going early. That was the second one. Another stalemate called 17 seconds left in the second Springer a 4-2 lead. Coon Rapids won the first match. Since then a pin and a pair of tech falls for the home team, the Anoka Tornadoes. And now a 4-2 lead 
with Scott Springer at 132. Well, you, you mentioned some of these lower weights where the Cardinals need to try and score some points. And I think this is an opportunity for Coon Rapids to see what they can do in scoring, scoring a few here. Weiser had to wipe up a little yep, blood. We'll clean up. Eager to get back to yeah. work. Yeah, he's down. He's down by two. He wants to get some points for his club. That's one that point. One yep, that's third caution. Point. Now Springer caution. I think it was technically two different cautions right. for two different violations, although very similar. Either way, Weiser gave up that penalty point and now trails by three. Yeah, with, with three cautions, he has, certainly has to be careful here moving forward in this final period. Now a caution for stalling. Getting caution for everything he can. It's a warning. <laughs> a lot of caution, there's a lot of stalling in this uh, in this match at 132. Weiser able to get turned around, get back to his base. A lot of uh, a lot of coaching from the Coon Rampart side. Pretty quiet on the Anoka side right now. Reversal right on the edge. Coach Springer didn't didn't agree with it. Weiser will give up the free point. Trails by two to be back to his back to even and to try and get one more takedown and tie the match. Down to 15 seconds stalemate. Ten seconds. Deep shot by Weiser. Can he finish it in two, one? No, he can't. Not before the buzzer. And Springer will hold on for the 6-4 win. Yeah, good effort by Weiser. It was a well-wrestled match. And uh, both wrestlers spent. No question. Scott Springer, a lot of energy used in that match. So that'll be Anoka's, uh, puts him to a 19-3 lead. Hundred and thirty-eight pounds, Will Larson for the Cardinals against Anoka captain Tyler Eichens. Yeah, he's only one uh, number one at 138 in the state. And he will get a takedown right at the edge of the mat to start things off. Will comes in with a 7 and 15 record on the season. And another takedown, and Aishans will set him free. 
Yeah, he's uh, he's he's a very good wrestler. That's why he's rated number one in the state. Larson trying to get in on the legs. Eichens able to quickly counter and get behind him for a takedown. Let's him go. Another takedown. And he'll let him go again. Five takedowns in the opening minute. Aisha is looking for his sixth. And there it is right at the one minute mark. Well, he's got, he's he's got get, a turn. Get him in the cradle and Larson in a whole world of trouble. And a very quick pin in one 11. Yeah, it's tough competition. No question about it. Aisha's uh, an excellent wrestler. That's going to push Anoka to the 25-3 lead. You can see it there, just made quick, quick work of them. Move ahead to 145, Isaiah Thompson on the mat for the Cardinals. I believe this is Cole Eichens for Anoka. Isaiah comes in at 17 and 15 on the year. Aisha's with a ankle pick to get the takedown. is working on that left arm. Yeah, and he actually is pulling Trying him back in. Control back behind his back. Thompson not giving him much to work with underneath. No, just a, a certainly just a slim lead here with 20 seconds remaining in the opening period. Aisha's <laughs> nearly had him flipped in the center of the mat, but down to the final 10, and Thompson just. Holding on to the leg underneath to keep himself from getting turned over. He's going to get a couple of near fall yep. points. So Aishins will have a four point lead headed into the second period. Yeah, he, he had him close to that, uh, to turning him over, but Thompson's doing a good job of just making sure he wouldn't let him. Is a sophomore? Thompson caution for the early start. Aishin's able to roll himself out of trouble and right into re a reversal. And another two points to his score. Stop that for potentially dangerous. <laughs> OK, 
Again, working on that left arm of Thompson, trying to get it wrapped up behind him. Aishin's able to get him walked over. Thompson in some trouble. Able to roll himself back over. Two I, more near yeah, fall points. Yeah, he, he came close, but you got to give credit to Thompson because he was going to make sure that he did not allow him to turn him over. Caution for Thompson for stalling underneath. I should with a nice, uh, nice cushion here as we're winding down in period number two. Trying to get him turned at the last second, see if he can add a couple more points, but it won't happen. An 8-0 lead for Cole Aishens as we go to the third period. Aishin's able to, to counter the quick move by Thompson off the whistle. Put him right back down to the mat and get weight on him. We've seen a lot of the Anoki guys cutting and giving up a trying for two for ones. We've not seen Aishin's cut free Thompson once during this 145 pound match. Aishin still holding on to the shutout. Yeah, and he's keeping uh, keeping good leverage and really not giving Isaiah much of anything to work with. Final minute of the third period. As you talked about, I should not letting Thompson get out at all. Not feeling the need to give up a point. Got him turned again. And again, we see a very quick move back to the chest by Thompson. But it'll be three near fall points this time. Yeah, and he pushed that lead to 11 to, no 11 to nothing. Down to the final 20 seconds. And it's looking like a major decision for Cole Aishens and the Tornadoes unless he can get some more. Right at the end, they'll give him two more. Still a major decision. Be a 13 nothing shutout for Cole Aishens. And the lead grows to 29 to 3. Brings us to 152, Joe. Oh, just moving along. So we have 
Jason Rollins on the mat for Anoka taking on the Cardinals Tyler Getz and Jason one of those uh, wrestlers for Anoka that's rated number eight at 152. Rollins getting in single trying to turn it into a double and he does turn gets around and get the takedown back on the mat. Well Joe as you talked about eight wrestlers for Anoka are rated in the state in the top ten in their weight classes and most of those in the top five. Absolutely. A couple of twos a couple of threes. Tyler Eichen's number one. Yep. Aishin's number one and and uh, Calvin Geronimo Neri at 160 I don't think we'll see tonight also number one. Another takedown right on the edge for Rollins. That 4-1 uh, lead, looking to try and see what he can do about getting some leverage, getting his, getting him turned. Just nothing for Getz to get any leverage or any momentum to get out from underneath. Well, Rollins doing a good job of uh, not allowing him anything. It's, see, head coach Bob Adams. Knew this would be a tough one coming in. Just wants his guys to make sure they wrestle hard and wrestle smart. Getz quickly to his feet and swallowing. Or Rollins rather quickly to his feet and then swallowing gets up and there's just trouble. climbing back on top and gets in a lot of trouble and there's a pin early in the second period. See him doing a nice job of turning and maybe get him some trouble here. You see the pin. Bodie Fitzsimmons wrestling for Anoka. Spencer Howe for the Cardinals. He'll get the takedown. Spencer comes in with a he's having a nice season a 22 and 10 record. Fitzsimmons able to get to his feet break the grip. And get the escape. Let's go, 
that Simmons tried to toss, but how stays with it. How tried to throw a headlock and just kind of went over the top yep. there. In a tight match to start here at 160, 2 1 lead for the Cardinals. Good shot in deep, but a little too late. And he's not going to get a chance to finish it up before the buzzer. A 2 1 lead for Spencer Howell moving to the second period. Now we'll start on top of Fitzsimmons here in the second period. Quick switch by Fitzsimmons, and he gets the reversal to put himself in the lead. Yeah, nice move to get a couple of points. Early in the second. Fitzsimmons working for a cradle on top. And finally, a stalemate called, and they'll reset. 110 remaining here in the second period. And Fitzsimmons holding that just a slight lead, obviously 3-2. Plenty of wrestling left here. Again, since getting that reversal, Fitzsimmons doing a nice job on top, denying every attempt by how to, to break free and continually working different methods to try and get his opponent flipped over. He's got a hold of that wrist and Trying to see what he can do to turn him. It's about time running out in the second period. So it started the second period with a one point lead for the Spencer Howell, Spencer Howell of the Cardinals. And now it'll start the third period with a one point lead for Anoka's Bodie Fitzsimmons. Fitzsimmons. A takedown and put Howell right in some trouble early on in this third. And Spencer trying to stay out of this, but Fitzsimmons got, has the leverage on top. Trying to bridge, but Fitzsimmons doing a nice job of getting chest to chest with Howell trying to control the head. Fitzsimmons may be a little too high yep. on the chest and now trying to squeeze it tight and finish it off. Got the advantage here, but. How not letting him on. Lot of time. Plenty of time. Oh, oh just a little still, under a minute. Still a minute to go. Yep. Right in the center of the mat. Just, he certainly has the control. Just how can't. is able, how 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 is able <laughs> to keep his shoulder blades off the mat in this position for this long is 
Hard to hard to imagine 30 seconds left and Fitzsimmons lifting the head now flips over to the other side squeezes that headlock ever so much tighter and leaning back trying to get the hips out of the way and it's under 10 seconds and House is not letting How? giving that leverage up. How did he stay out of it? Wow. I, I don't know how he did get three near fall points there at the end, but it's still an 8 2 decision, and it could have so easily been a pin. Absolutely. And I get this is the toss to get How on his back, and then it started from there, and he kept the leverage on top. And How, as you mentioned, not sure how he stayed out of that, but he did. Lost the match, but didn't get pinned. Amara Kane will wrestle against Richie Hammonds for Anoka here at 170 pounds. Amara comes in with a 6 and 13 record on the season. They'll have a little bit of a height and length advantage over Hammonds. But Hammond certainly being the aggressor early on. Getting in and tripping him up to get the takedown. Both these wrestlers are juniors. Hammond's very aggressive right off the whistle went after that left arm got Kane rolled over at least momentarily continues to battle for control underneath and again trying to roll Kane over to his back Mara able to get back to his elbow a couple of points for Hammonds makes it four nothing. Hammond's looking for the cradle. And now looking for the chicken wing instead. And he's getting Kane turned over. Yeah, he almost had it, but down to about 10 seconds left in this third or in this first period. Hammond's going to pick up some more back points right on the edge here before the buzzer. At three more, make it seven nothing. Hammonds quickly to his feet off the whistle. And they Desperately keeping hold of that right leg. And now the scheme for Hammonds. Definitely Hammonds being the aggressor, no question about it. And he'll get another takedown at the edge. I'll use trying to use that leverage to get him turned, but. Mara's going to get the escape. Immediately went to the quarter Nelson, but his bench telling him, telling him to cut Kamara free. Yeah. 
Nice duck under for another takedown. Under a minute in period number two. Healthy 12-1 lead. And he's going to get Kinnade turned over right in the center of the mat. A lot of time left here in this second period. Trying to get control of that left arm. Get him spread out and finish it off. And they in a very peculiar yeah. position. Just doing whatever he can to try and keep his shoulder blades off the mat. And now we're going to get a whistle, three near fall points, and then it stopped for potentially dangerous. And, and Hammonds, uh, again, being the aggressor, doing a good job of racking up points quickly. That's 15 through just about two periods. That's a 15-1 lead. Yep. Four seconds left, and that's how the second period will end. <laughs> Hammonds with a 14-point lead. with a takedown, could end it with another tech fall, and there it is right there. In 4.04. So that'll push their lead to 43-3. to three. Well, and that, I believe Fitzsimmons actually sealed the yeah. victory with the win at 160. Certainly with f only four Remaining, you're not, you can't get 10 points per weight class. Now trailing by 40. <laughs> Only six points available. Yes. Both uh, Coach Springer and Coach Tronson. Do a little rock, paper, Yeah, a little rock, paper. Rock, paper, scissors. <laughs> Well, Jack Sheck is on the on the mat for yep. the Cardinals. That much we know. Jack always anxious. Uh, Durazzo always ready to go. Oh, they're going to put Nick Berg oh, out there. All right. Jackson Street is going to wrestle for the Tornadoes. Nick Berg here. Nick's got a 13 and 16 record. Just wanted to make sure yep. everybody was aware of who was who was wrestling be on the mat, and yep. we had the right people announced. Same ones that came out, which they are. So we're ready to wrestle. Jackson Street and Nick Berg, 182. This one already decided in Anoka's favor. They have ripped off nine straight wins. That includes three pins, three tech falls. Yeah, Dalton Miller, who's the who's the usually wrestles at this weight for Anoka, also the ninth-rated wrestler in 182. We'll see if he wrestles up. Street got down to the double leg and gets the takedown on Berg. Two-point lead early. Yeah. 
Working on getting Bird turned over, and he's got him in some trouble. He does. Right at the edge of the mat, Berg able to roll out of it. Will be three near fall points for Jackson Street and a 5 0 lead. And now he's got Berg trying to roll through again, and this time Berg able to get through it a little quicker. But two more back points will make it a 7 0 lead. Berg tried to switch out, broken back down to the mat by Street. And Street will ride it out here to end the first period with the healthy 7-0 lead. Almost had almost uh, had him turn before the, the buzzer. But you're right, 7-0, nice, uh, nice lead here in period number one as we move to two. They'll switch positions to start the second. Street will be underneath. And quickly switches out, gets the reverse. Climbs way up top and goes to the quarter, Nelson. And working on getting Berg turned over again. Berg in some trouble, rolls through it. Right at the center of the mat. Now we, we've seen him do that uh, several times here. Street gets him, gets him in position, but he's able to roll through. Street looks to get Berg turned over. He's going to earn some more points. And again, we see Berg able to kick his way out, only giving up the two. That'll make it a 13 0 lead. Looking to turn him again. That leads to back points. It's got to lead to a pin or it'll be an attack fall. Berg able to get to his feet. I don't know that he understood how high Jackson yeah. was on his back there. Gonna give him three near yep. fall points just before the end of the second period. And another tech fall. That was just a 190. Now we'll see Jack Shack. Jax uh, comes in with an 18-13 record on the season. Dalton, no, this is where Dalton Miller, so we talked about Dalton Miller earlier, ranked ninth in the state at 182.
Shaq quickly to his feet. Bird gets around in front of him, takes him right back down, and right toward his back. Shaq bridging out. Trying to go to that half. Nelson to get Sheck turned back over on the edge, driving with his feet. Sheck able to roll through. Two near fall points, and then they'll send him back to center. So Miller with that 4-0 lead. Still plenty of time left in this first period. Miller has been the aggressor to start. Turn Sheck back over, got three more near fall. And a 7-0 lead as we reach the final 15 seconds of the first period. Dalton Miller in complete control. He's taking a look up at the clock just to see where he's at. We'll take that 7-0 lead. Going to the second. Check starting on top. And looking for different ways to turn Miller over. Being very aggressive, trying to keep his weight on top of Miller to his feet. Turns around and gets the takedown. Reversal point, 9 nothing now. And again, Sheck getting turned over and just trying to bridge out, able to roll back over. Three more near fall, and it's a 12-0 lead. Miller wants to roll him over again. Check just holding on. There it is. There's three and a, another tech fall. We're down to the final two matches of the night. Then Lathrop, the uh, Number six wrestler in the state for Anoka 220. Wrestling Lucas Part Partlow for the Cardinals. getting what he wanted from down there and gets got, another takedown but Partlow right back to his stomach. Uh, got what he wanted there as he's able to get the two more points extend the lead to 4-1. Lathrop's going to let him up again. Makes it 4-2 now. Barlow a good shot to get in really deep, but off the edge of the mat. Off 
the edge again. 30 seconds left here in the first period. Takedown right in the final seconds here for Ben Lathrop. Pushes lead to 6 2 before the end of the first. That'll do it. Barlow able to break Lathrop back down. Lathrop able to get to his feet pretty quickly. Looking to pull out of it. And off the edge, Barlow just holding on for dear life. I think he's got a cramp. I look like it anyway. Again, Partlow doing a nice job of breaking him back down. Again, Lathrop back to his feet, nearly got away, and Partlow able to break him back down to the mat. Barlow still trailing 6 2, but looking to be the aggressor here in period number two. Minute remains. Lathrop well, again quickly to his feet and nearly got away before the whistle blew and they were out of bounds. The Partlow thought, or uh, Lathrop thought he had the escape and some, uh, some on the Anoka bench felt the same, but not the way it was there given. There it. he will get the escape. Down to the final 30 seconds in this second period. Lathrop took a look at the clock. Partlow dove in at the legs, but Lathrop able to keep him at bay. Get off the edge, and they will reset to center. Neutral position with just under 24 seconds left. A nice catch yeah. by Partlow as Lathrop was trying to swing around behind to get this late takedown here, and Partlow grabbed hold of that leg to keep him from getting around behind and holds on for the buzzer. Lathrop on top to start the third. He's got a 7 2 lead. Yeah, nice little, nice little cushion. Partlow needs to 
try and get out from under there, obviously, if he wants an opportunity. Still plenty of time in the third period, but he needs to fight his way from underneath. Lathrop trying to get control of that right arm of Partlow. Partlow warned for stalling underneath. Stalemate yep. is called with 30 seconds left. Still the five point lead for Lathrop. Looks like he's going to ride it out yep. for that 7 2 decision. Yeah, that's going to do it. Though now coming at, uh, up at. Uh, Five. Could be the match, uh, this match the, of the this night. This is the one we've been waiting the for. The big boys. We're at the price of admission. Yep. Tim Van Dyke rated number four. Brandon Frankfurth rated number six. And they waste no time going at it. The big boys lock horns up top. Yeah, Tim, Tim 31 and three. He takes the mat. Both uh, offensive linemen for the football teams, respectively. Frank Firth, a junior, and Mandike, a senior. This is a preview that could be the preview of next week's, or a, or a I guess the next week is team section, but individual section championship. This yep. could very well be one of the featured matchups of that tournament. No question. Well, prelude right now. And you could see both of these young men representing section seven in the state tournament. No question about that top as well. Two, top two make it to state. Uh, nobody in their section ranked higher than these two young men. Neither able to get an advantage through this first period. And it looks like we're headed for the second period with a scoreless tie. And neither neither wrestler giving any ground. Frankfurt quickly to his feet and gets the early escape to start the second period. Gets himself in the lead. Yeah, certainly points tough to come by here early on.
both being pretty cautious and defensive. Don't want to make that mistake that could lead to the big points for your opponent. This is correct. Under a minute remaining in period number two. Final 30 seconds of the second period. The one lonely point so far in the match scored by Brandon Frankfurth early in this second period as he opened with an escape. Other than that, a whole lot of locked horns Absolutely. up top. Who will have the energy to finish strong in the third period? We'll find out. Tim can uh, get that escape point to even it up here. We'll see coming up with two minutes remaining in this match. Mandyke looking for a similar escape. And he is going to get it right before the end. It was, and I think Frankfurt kind of tossed him away, and that's why he got that escape point. I think there would have been, if he had held on there, may have you know, been whistled for off the mat and not given that escape point. But as it is, an escape point for Mandyke evens the score. 90 seconds. to see if one of them can score another point. <laughs> now 120 remaining, and, and you're right, you are, the locking horns is exactly what they've been That's doing. That's two big boys. Yeah, very big boys, no question. Final minute of the third period. Yeah, really, neither wrestler has been even close to scoring any other points other than the two escapes. Mandy going for the shot there, but well off the edge. Yeah, this it looks like we may be yeah. going for sudden victory. Neither of these so. guys able to find any room. Frankfurt got in on his shot. The headlock and almost the takedown by Mandyke, but they're gonna say no. Not in time before the buzzer sounded. <laughs> So we'll put a minute on the clock and next point wins. They're going to put him back in the middle. <laughs> 
We're, we may have to try a second yeah, I think sudden victory oh, I period think we're, as we're down to the final five seconds here. I think we're going to. Yep, that's going to do it. Another one. Mandike will be in the down position. You saw him get the escape last time. Well, it's the only place anyone has scored from. Yep. Mandike trying to get to his feet and does. He, he does. gets the break, the win. No, no. Got to. And we've got to go through another yeah. period, and he's going to have the same opportunity to, to get uh, an escape yep. if there is no decisive hold in the match. We can go all night with this one. Okay, now it'll be Frankfurt's. Chance. And if Mandai can hold out, it's not going to be easy. Both wrestlers, I'm sure, are tired, no question. You just got to hold it for 20 seconds. Not as easy as it sounds. No. The fans are up on their Got feet, it. and there's the escape. Wow. Well, Let's this has been all it's, all it's built for, Joe. No question. So Frankfurt will get the choice because he scored the first point, so I'm sure he'll he'll choose down. Fans on their feet here. Okay, now we're at a sudden victory. Next point will win. Anchor to his feet. That's it. The escape and the win. Now, a tough way for Tim Mandike to lose uh, his fourth match of the year. Both very competitive wrestlers. Well, and for Anoka, after the win by Spobody at 106 pounds for the uh, Cardinals, Tornado swept up yep. after that. No, All no the question. Next 13 weight classes. Well, you can see why they're number three in the state. They, they've got a really nice squad, and, and one of their uh, top wrestlers, one of their number one wrestlers in the state, didn't even wrestle tonight. And we have some girls hockey playoffs coming up for you here on CTN this weekend. Can't be replayed until midnight due to Minnesota State High School League rules. But uh, the number four seed Spring Lake Park Coon Rapids squad will take on the number five seed from Rogers at the Roseville Ice Arena 2.30 on Saturday replay at midnight. Girls basketball on Tuesday the 14th and boys hockey on Thursday the 16th of next week. But that's going to do it for this edition of CTN Sports. Again, the final score, Anoka 59, Coon Rapids 3. Want to thank everybody out there for joining us and continuing to support everything we do here at CTN. For the entire crew, including Howard Shapiro, I'm Joe Young saying goodnight.